So in this video today, we're going to talk a little bit about custom bikes. So custom bikes may seem like an extravagance, um, and I'm not here to tell you that they're not, but they might actually be more useful to you as a rider than you think. They might be the reasonably affordable option that you haven't considered before that could change your outlook on how enjoyable cycling can be. Things are different these days. So 15 or 20 years ago, an above average uh, road bike might cost anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000. And a similarly equipped custom bike is going to be probably fifteen hundred, maybe two thousand dollars more than that. So maybe somewhere around four to five thousand dollars for the custom bike. And incidentally, a really tricked out custom bike probably going to be around ten grand, something like that. Back fifteen or twenty years ago, there really wasn't any such thing as a ten or eleven thousand dollar stock bike. I mean, they did exist, but there just weren't that many of them. They were very few and far between. So now, fast forward to today, um, that above average stock bike. Um, is no longer 2,500 to 3,000. As you might expect, it's you know probably probably somewhere around 4,500 to 6,000 dollar range. And incidentally, now every manufacturer has options, sometimes many options, in the eight to 12,000 dollar range for a stock bike. And by stock, I mean the the obviously the the frames are prefabricated to certain sizes. And let's just define this, the custom bikes as a um, one in which the frame is, uh, the geometry of the frame is uh, a one-off design for the individual. So this isn't meant to be an explanation of inflation or price escalation, things like that. Because that's, of course, that happens. I do want to highlight the relative changes among stock bikes and the relatively reasonable prices now for custom bikes. And an interesting thing has happened because in the past 10 to 15 years, uh, the what has become acceptable to spend on a bike has definitely escalated. Whereas, you know, 15 years ago, you couldn't buy a custom bike for the price of a reasonable or a, you know, an, kind of a semi-average cost for a, a, a stock bike back then. But today with the with this change, you know, now we're seeing stock bikes routinely in the you know 4500 to 7500 range you can have a custom bike and actually a really nice one for that for that price and i'm really truly am astounded by the number of bikes being sold these days stock bikes off the floor in the seven to nine thousand dollar range and of course even higher than that but seven to nine thousand is not that it's not uncommon at all it happens all the time now and and today you can still build a, a really nice uh, custom bike for this same for that same price. And again, let me disclaimer here. I'm not saying anybody needs to or should spend, you know, ten grand on a bike. I'm just trying to show the some of the relative changes that have occurred in the prices of these things. And I know what some people are going to say. You're going to say, well, you can't get a, a custom carbon bike uh, for these prices. And uh, every you know all the stock bikes, of course, are going to be made of carbon. And and this is true. You probably would have to spend between five and six thousand dollars for a frame. Uh, custom frame built out of carbon. Uh, and they're out there available and they make some really nice ones. But there's a couple of things you need to remember is, is that there are many, and I mean a lot, and it's surprising, there are a lot of stock frames that go for five, six, six thousand dollars even more. You don't really have to look hard to find these. And number two, there's a really good chance that that carbon frame that you, that you have, even if you paid five thousand dollars for it, it might not handle or ride any better than a well-built uh, custom steel or custom titanium bike, you know, a non-carbon, a, a metal bike. Throw in the fact that you could probably have a fully customized steel or titanium bike built specifically for you for a fraction of the cost, and it begins to kind of make a little bit more sense. And I, I do think that these materials um, have sort of been left behind and, and probably shouldn't have. These, these still make really nice bikes, actually exceptional bikes um, in, in a lot of cases. But I want to stay close to the idea of bike fit. If you've never had any fit problems, you're super resilient, you're very, you know, good, good strength, good stability, good flexibility, all these things. You've never had a problem riding any of your bikes. Then, you know, spending a, you know, good amount of money to get a super aerodynamic or super light a uh, stock bike and spending whatever you want on it, that's fine. If, if it's going to fit you just fine, then that's perfect. That, 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 there's, there's nothing wrong with that, of course. But over the last 10 years, I've fit you know, many thousands of people. 
And the numbers really haven't changed. Every year I see dozens, if not hundreds, of people that in reality would have been much better fit um, and much better served had they not bought that stock bike off the floor and had actually opted for a, a custom bike. And true, some of these people couldn't afford the custom bike. They had spent, you know, $2,500 on their, on their stock bike. And that's fine. We, that's why, you know, we, we, we fit to what they have. And that's, we're going to work to make that bike as good as we can. But a lot of them, many, in fact, spent enough. They spent a lot of money in some cases, in a lot of cases, unfortunately, that, um, they could have easily afforded a really nice custom bike and they would have had zero compromises because after all, that's what building a custom bike is about. You're building a bike with zero compromises. You're not compromising the fit. You're not compromising your balance and weight distribution. You're not compromising the handling of the bike. In a lot of cases, you know, if you have and are having or have had fit problems with, with uh, stock bikes and you've always struggled, you know, stock bikes, they're, they are what they are. You, you, you can only do so much to change them. And, and a lot of times people would be better served having something made for them. Now let's address a couple things first. Weight. Yes, you know, there's, the people bring up, well, a steel or a titanium bike isn't going to be as light as that carbon bike. And I would say that's probably true. Um, not in all cases, actually. I've, I've actually um, seen some carbon frames, even some expensive ones that, that aren't terribly light, really. And frankly, you know, the difference, even if we pin the difference at, uh, at, at a full pound of the difference in the frame, even at a pound, truthfully, most of us don't do enough climbing to, to really notice that. And even if we did, there's a lot of other ways that, that we, could, uh, we could dispense with that pound. And so the difference for an individual between a 15-pound bike and a 16-pound bike for most riders, functionally, there's probably going to be no difference. It, it really often barely registers. So now let's look at, now what about aerodynamics? I hear people ask about that. You know, these round tubed uh, metal bikes aren't going to be as aerodynamic as the carbon, as the carbon ones. Um, perhaps. Um, I will say that if you've ever spent any time in a wind tunnel, you learn really fast that aerodynamics is a uh, very tricky science. There's a lot that goes into it. It is not a black and white or an A plus B equals C scenario. You could have the, you know, what you can't do, unfortunately, it would be nice if you could, but you know, you could take, you can't take the fastest wheels and pair it with the fastest frame, whatever that means, however it was tested and get the fastest bike. It has more to do with the interaction of the parts to create the whole. And so there's times when you have what is considered the fastest wheel tests more, you know, more poorly in a given frame than another one. And same thing goes for the rider on the bike, uh, how the rider interacts on the bike with the wind. Um, you know, it, it may or may not um, improve things. And frankly, there's a lot better ways to uh, improve your aerodynamics than to than to, to manage the frame. Of course, you've, many of you have heard, you know, like uh, your wheels, of course, that's a pretty big one, but something as simple as your helmet or even a snug fitting jersey. A snug fitting jersey is going to do a lot better than one that has a little bit of it flaps in the wind a little bit. Um, that's going to make actually a pretty significant difference, potentially on the order of what you would gain from an aerodynamic frame. Um, even something as simple as keeping your back pockets clean, keeping stuff out of them so that you don't have a, a, a lump back there for the for the wind to to run off of. So all this goes back to the idea, and this is, in my opinion, this is undisputed, is that the bike fit, how it fits should be king. It should be the first box checked in this whole process of determining what um, what you need for your next bike. And frankly, if again, if you fit a stock bike perfectly, great, go for it. But if you don't fit this stock bike well, then you need to find a geometry that does work better for you. And this might mean uh, a, a custom bike designed for you. And if you do ignore the fit in favor of aesthetics or weight or aerodynamics or any of these other things, um, I understand. I'm not here to judge anybody, but just understand that there will be compromises with those bikes. That's it for this one. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Um, if you have any questions, comments, anything, um, your experience with stock or custom bikes, whatever it might be, put them in the comments below. Um, check out some of my other, other videos here, and uh, if you haven't, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Thanks, guys.